Thank you very much for coming. So in ergodic theory, we study a category whose objects are probability spaces. And they are equipped with a map T from X to X that is measure preserving, meaning that the pullback of any set has the same measure as the set. The morphisms are called factor maps. So let's call this one X. So we have a map from one dynamical system to another. If we can map the set X to the set Y in a measurable way, map T to S, and map the measure on X to the measure on Y. So the measure of the pullback of any set is the measure of the set. And, and von Neumann observed that one can think about these settings from the point of view of functional analysis. So once you have a probability space, you can construct the L2 of the probability space. That's a Hilbert space. Uh, once you have this map T, you can define a very natural linear operator taking F uh, to the translation by T. And also when you have a factor map, then you can uh, define an, embed an embedding of the Hilbert space related to Y uh, to L2 of X simply by lifting. The fact that T is measure preserving means that this linear operator is unitary. The fact that uh, these two uh, properties here means that this embedding is an isometry and that if you restrict it to the image, it's unitary equivalent to S. And with this observation, he proved a very uh, fundamental and classical result called the Minergodic theorem, which says that if you have a function L to X, then the limit of the average of all translations of F by T converges in L2 to the projection onto the subspace of all T invariant functions at F. And um, that's also a good uh, time to give a definition. So in ergodic theory, we like to assume that our systems are ergodic. And this means that, uh, so a system is ergodic, if these invariant uh, functions are just the constants. In that case, uh, we can uh, get a, a slightly nicer result. This just equals to the integral of it. Um, now, uh, Fürstenberg was interested in a generalization of this um, average to uh, longer progressions. And this is somewhat related to a uh, similarity theorem that Florian and Ethan told you about. So uh, Fürstenberg asked the following question. Let's take k functions, now bounded, so we can multiply and ask if we can say anything about the following average. So we apply t to the n to f, t to the 2n to f2, and t to the kn to fk. So we can ask whether the limit exists. And if it exists, what's the limit? Uh, so some history, when k equals to 2, uh, first may prove that it converges and also computed the limit. When k equals to three, it was a work of uh, uh, Fürstenberg and Weiss and independently a work of Kohn's and Lezin. And for uh, general k, let's say k greater than three, uh, this is a work, let me write it in, in another place. That is a theorem, uh, which was proved independently by Host and Tran and by Tan. And they prove the following that for every k, one can find a very special factor, which we call zkx. And uh, you can see it because uh, <laughs> once we have a factor, we also have an embedding of the Hilbert spaces. So I have an embedding of L to zkx in L to x, which gives me a decomposition. So L to x decomposes to a Hilbert space isomorphic to L to ZKX plus an orthogonal part. And this decomposition has very nice properties. 
The first one says that this factor is very important. So if there exists even one uh, index i such that one of the functions is in the complement, then uh, this average, so this question mark, exists and it equals to zero. And since uh, this uh, term here is linear in all of these functions, this means that if you're only interested in the limit, uh, you can uh, sort of assume that x equals to zkx. And the second property, they classify this very important factor, showing that in this category, zkx is an inverse limit, so we can approximate it, uh, of some very nice systems called, uh, in this case, k minus one step nil systems. And we should think about uh, new systems as very, very structured and very simple systems, uh, because on these systems, it is very easy to uh, prove the convergence, even pointwise convergence, and give a limit formula. Uh, so instead of defining what a new system is, I want to give a, a nice example, a very classical one. So this J K only depends on K? So it depends on K and X. Yeah, yeah, no, no, X, of course, but uh, OK. It doesn't depend upon f1 through f2. No, so it works for all, for all functions. And t is a ergodic transformation or t is uh, so, yeah, so, so I'm going to assume that it's ergodic. But uh, yeah, let's assume it's ergodic. Uh, so here's an example of a nice uh, uh, new system. So if I have any commodity ring out, the Heisenberg group over R is denoted by, is the group of all upper triangular matrices with one on the diagonal. And if R is commutative, this is an example of a two-step nilpotent group. And specifically, I can look at the following system. I can, I can look at the following topological space. I will take the group Heisenberg over R, the reals, and divide it by the Heisenberg over the integers. So that's a homogeneous space, but it's also an example of a two-step near manifold. So near is for near potent, the groups are near potent, and manifold because we have Lie groups here. So the group over R is a Lie group, it's locally Euclidean, this is discrete, so the quotient is a manifold. Uh, I should say that one can prove that this quotient is compact, uh, so one have a normalized R measure here, and Borel sigma algebra, so that's a probability space. So to get a system, I need an action, and the action is also very simple. Uh, the action looks like this. So now we can choose any uh, matrix A in the Heisenberg group of the R and define an action simply by multiplying by some element from the homogeneous group. So uh, let's say that A is some one alpha beta gamma. I can define an action uh, simply by multiplying. So with this action, uh, uh, this uh, system uh, becomes a, a two-step NIP system. And I should say that, as uh, someone asked, uh, this only works under the assumption of ergodicity. If we want to be ergo ergodic, we need to assume that one alpha and beta are independent of OK. Uh, but that's a nice example. You can see that we have a lot of algebraic structure and topological structure, uh, and they are used uh, to prove so now uh, what I was uh, interested in uh, doing is uh, trying to see if I can generalize these results to uh, settings of where uh, we have actions of other groups. So usually, we say that we have a measure of preserving transformation t from x to x. And actually, to really prove this theorem, one has to assume that t is invertible, right? Because the action here must be invertible. We have groups. And therefore, we can see this transformation as a z-action. But in general, we can study arbitrary g-actions on arbitrary probability spaces by measure preserving transformations. Specifically, I was interested in uh, countable abelian groups. But you can define it in greater generality. Uh, so if you have a countable abelian group, you can uh, study 
measure preserving actions of G on some probability spaces. And as usual, this gives rise to unitary representations of G on the L2 space. And using Fermat sequences, you can uh, define new uh, multiple probability averages and also other notions related to these factors. And you can ask whether uh, they uh, satisfy this structure. So I gave an example showing that in general, when this group is not finitely generated, it will not be the, the special factor, at least for k greater than three, or equal to three. It will not be an, an inverse limit of near systems, but it will be something else, at least for small case. So one uh, theorem I want to tell you about is the result of Jamnesham, myself, and Tau. And we proved that when k is less or equal than three, but actually it's only really interesting or in case equal to three, because otherwise it's easy, uh, these factors uh, is an inverse limit of something we call two-step nilpotent translational system. <clears throat> well, by a two-step nilpotent translational system, we actually mean something that really looks like a new system. It's a homogeneous space, but this homogeneous group, it may not be a Lie group. It will be a Polish locally compact group, and it will be two-step nilpotent. So you still have some nilpotent structure, but it may not be a Lie group. And I actually proved that you cannot get nil systems. You must use this more general uh, notion, but it's still good enough to prove convergence and uh, limit formulas. <laughs> Uh, we try to see what happens for higher values of k. And we end up having a problem. Um, and essentially, the problem is that this theorem and the other theorems that I told you about are not structure theorems. They are approximated structure theorems. They use the notion of an inverse limit. You know nothing about this special factor. But you, know that you can approximate it by nice factors. And we, if we could somehow eliminate this inverse limit, we could, uh, in theory, generalize this to higher values of k, but unfortunately we can't. And even in the context of z-actions, there is an example of Rudolf where he constructed the system x, which equals to the special factor, which means that this is an, in an inverse limit of new systems. It is an inverse limit of some Heisenberg systems. Specifically, they look like this. So this is two to the n z. But here I only take z. And the action is some multiplication by one alpha beta gamma. <laughs> he proved that even so, this is an inverse limit of new systems. It is not a two step translational system. So if you don't use two step nilpotent translational systems, So if you don't use inverse limits, it seems like this notion is not good enough. But actually, there is another notion that might be good enough. And at least when k equals to 3, it is. So there is another theorem, uh, which I proved, that works at least when k equals to 3. And uh, it says the following. So in general, there exists some compact abelian totally disconnected k, but specifically for Rudolf example, it has the, the following structure. It looks like one, zero, 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 one, two adic integers, zero, zero, one. So it's isomorphic to the two adic integers, a totally disconnected compact abelian book. And this z2 is actually the inverse limit of z modulo two to the nz. This is where it comes from. And then, um, so originally what I proved is that you can take any system Z3X and extend it to a translational system. So instead of this Heisenberg group over R, you can take Heisenberg group over the ring R times the two other integers. And then you need a quotient by some discrete subgroup. So let me not define it. And this extends Z3X. Z3X is a factor of a system like that. But then after talking to uh, Jonathan Gutman, I realized that one can actually say something about Z3X if you only quotient by K from the other direction. 
So we get a new structure, the structure of cosets, a double cosets, and we hope, conjecture, that this new structure is true for every k. Every k this is a double coset. Sorry, this double coset, what's the, where's the action? Uh, so you, the action is, so if you think about z actions, you just have to choose an element a in uh, this group, and you have to assume that it commutes with k or something. Uh, yeah, so you, a commutes with k. Or normalize this k, so it will be wrong. And in general, if you have g actions, so the same, you just choose a, a g for every g and you hope that it is a group. Uh, okay, that's it, questions? So in this example, you you prove that Z3 exists. Yes, but in general, it, it works in general. So what is in general? So in general, there is some uh, Polish group G. Okay, in general, there is some G two steps. So in general, it means for arbitrary JKX like that? For, uh, say again? So J yeah, for, ar for arbitrary Z3X, for arbitrary actions of arbitrary countable abelian groups uh, by measure present transformations, you can find a two step an impotent Polish group. Um, actually, I didn't say, but this is not going to be discrete anymore. It will be totally disconnected uh, and co compact. And this is just a compact, totally disconnected BK. And what's the difficulty when K is four? When K is four. Four. Ah. Um, I mean, with this new notion, with this double. Uh, the difficulty is so actually Z2X is very, very simple. Z2X is just a rotation. <laughs> the difficulty is that this is a new notion and it's more complicated than. But do you, you think at K equals four, you'll need another new notion that each step? No, I think that this is the, the notion. Specifically, I know that if you consider, uh, so this is true for all countable abelian groups, but if, if you consider. Uh, so, for example, for ZD actions, uh, Gutmann and Manners have uh, proved, okay, they didn't, they have a preprint where they claim that they proved this for every case. <laughs> uh, but also when you study... That's what my kids call throwing shade. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but... Uh, they have a preprint. Yes, yes, they have a preprint, they send it to me, so... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but also, if you consider other groups which are not finitely generated, for instance, if you consider infinite direct sum of Z mod PZ, where P is fixed, uh, then we, okay, again, a preprint of uh, mean germination et al. And this is also true for every K. So we, at least we have many examples where this is true for every K. And we have some partial results when K equals to four. So in particular, you know the answer to this conjecture for Z actions? So for the actions, uh, Goodman, Manners, and uh, maybe value, maybe not, I'm not sure actually, uh, they prove that it is a double concept. But they use the host graph theorem. They actually show that all inverse limits of NIP systems are double concept. So I guess we want the conjecture at the end of the year, right? <laughs> I, I, I'm, I've got only three orders. So. <laughs> I don't want to use them all. I've ordered one. <laughs> okay, let's close the day on this cheerful note.